Hi everyone, my name's Mike and I'd like to welcome you to the latest in this series on classic bikes that we're doing. Today we're doing a Triumph T140V from 1975. Um, it's one of Dave's bikes and it's the bike that he likes the most, as he'll explain later on uh, when we talk to him. But he's done some modifications to it that have turned it into a fantastic bike that you can ride in modern day conditions. Um, it's really a fantastic bike to ride um, and I get a ride on it later on which is, which is great. Um, so as you well know we have done a series of bikes, I think this is number seven in the series so far and uh, we've got more planned, uh, we've got some workshop stuff planned for over the winter and um, it, once the weather starts getting nice again we're going to get out on the bikes again so this might be the last on bike video this year though we may have a very special one that we might slip in before the weather closes in so stay tuned for that so yeah if you like what you've seen so far please like and subscribe and hit the little bell that will notify you of new stuff coming up because it really does make a difference to us. Um, it allows us to keep on doing these videos. So it is important that you that you subscribe to it if you, if you wouldn't mind. So that would help us greatly. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and uh, let's get on with the show. Okay, so this is Dave, and he's going to tell us something about this beautiful Bonneville. Thank you, Mike. Um, so this is my uh, 1975 Triumph T140V Bonneville. It's the bike I've owned the longest out of all my bikes. I've owned it 30-something years, 31 years, something like that. Um, and it's a really early co-op bike, so just after the lock-in lifted in Meriden, they produced a batch of the rear drum brake bikes, right hand shift rear drum brake before they went a few months later over to left hand shift rear disc. And one of the reasons um, this is a really important bike to me, it's probably the least collectible of all my bikes, but it's probably possibly the last one I'd ever let go of is I bought my first big bike after I owned a slightly fragile Ducati 250 Desmo was I bought my dad's T140V Bonneville to a very similar spec to this. It was UK spec, but it was the same era, um, right hand shift, rear drum brake, Bonneville. And stupidly, as you do when you're 18 or 19, I sold that to buy a brand new Bonneville Special, which was nothing like as good. And uh, I always regretted selling my dad's old bike. And so I got this sometime later. In between times, I've owned a few Bonnevilles. And during the 90s, um, I had the inspiration. The inspiration came from I guess at the time Harley had just bought out the Evolution engine and I, I got into Sportsters in quite a big way tuning up Evolution Sportsters and they they were like a much more reliable re-engineered version of the previous engine and I wanted to do the same with Triumphs they obviously the evolution of Triumphs stopped at that point <coughs> with the closure of Meriden but uh, I kind of wanted to make this bike uh, slightly more reliable slightly smoother slightly better running slightly better braked suspended version of what it was so um, I guess the fundamental core of all of that was I got a pair a set of Giladoni alloy barrels Nicosil barrels um, Giladoni are the company who make 
Nicosil alloy barrels for BMW, I think they still do. Didn't you have them on your Guzzi as well? Yeah, Guzzi, I've always used Gilladoni because they're based in the same town in Italy. Oh, yeah. um, but they know what they're doing with Nicosil barrels, obviously. And Les Harris, who, who went on to make a batch of Bonnevilles after Meriden closed for a short period down in Devon, he commissioned the barrels and sold them. He, he sold some on the bikes. He wasn't supposed to under his license agreement, but he sold some on the on the new Bonnevilles he was making, but he sold them as an aftermarket piece. They weren't cheap. They came with a set of uh, German Asso pistons, which um, this is the only downside of the kit really, is they're quite low compression. I think they're by, from memory about seven and a half to one, whereas originally this bike would have been about 8.5 to one compression. So a bit of a drop. There's two sides to that though. There's a bit of a yin and yang. Is The good side is it really lowers the vibration as you'll attest, Mike, this is a... Yeah, it's smooth, it's lovely. Really smooth. For a rigidly mounted 750, it's incredibly smooth. There's other reasons for that, but the low compression really helps. And also, the head's been skimmed, so some of that compression has come back. I've set the squish clearance, which is sort of... I won't go into the technicalities, but it's, um, it, it works well within the remit of that low compression. And one of the advantages, and there are many advantages of Nicosil barrels, is they run really tight clearances so, that, so they control the rings really well. So all that compression isn't wasted. Um, and it runs so much, uh, sort of, it's much more refined than a standard Bonnie. You know, there's less piston slap and it goes really well. And leading on from that, I did a few other mods. Um, hotter camshafts, mega cycle cams, as with the 650 Bonnie that we filmed not so long ago. It's got a set of mega cycle cams. They're TT cams, not as in the Isle of Man TT, but as in American TT tracks, which are sort of flat track oh, tracks. Oh, dirt tracks, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with a jump in them. So it's kind of a mid-range torque kind of uh, set of cams. They're very carefully dialed in. It's got a pair of 32 mil Makunis, Makuni VMs, nice carbs. Probably if I was doing it now, I'd probably use Premier Amels, but they weren't available at the time. Um, slightly bigger carbs than standard. They flow a little bit better on flow benches, VM carbs. And they're on a beautiful set of uh, inlet manifolds that Peckett and McNabb, a uh, very famous company who now deal mainly with Tridents. Um, Richard Peckett sort of tapered the manifold to take it from 32 mil down to the standard head uh, and cleaned up the head, the inlet head, while I was having a set of uh, valves, P&M valves put in it. They did a lot of racing in the yeah, 70s, didn't they? Yeah, but he really yeah. knows what he's doing with Triumphs yeah. as well. So, so you know, the top end's been sorted. The bottom end, balanced crank with um, plasma nitrided crank while they were at it. Again, done by P&M, which just makes it a slightly tougher crank. Upgraded bearings, a um, few other bits and pieces, um, but mainly that's it on the engine front. Um, and that was really about it to get running cooler, running smoother. Um, what else have we got? We've got some Dunstall copy megaphones, which I'd modified with some um, sound absorption material. We've got Coney dampers. We've got upgraded forks with 3D motorcycle dampers in it. We've got a floating disc with an alloy caliper. The standard calipers that Triumph fitted on all the disc brake bikes were decent brakes, locky brakes, but they're a cast iron chunk of boat anchor. They made them out of cast iron, the calipers, and they weigh about three pound. This, of that, that works brilliantly, yeah. doesn't it? Well, I think the floating disc really helps yeah. and the alloy caliper, and it gets rid of some unsprung weight. We've got a T140 special mudguard, just because I think it looks prettier. The bike's been through about three iterations of paint jobs over the years. It, it did come with a tatty paint job. I had it resprayed in Cherokee red and white, which was the standard paint job, red and cream. Um, and recently, and I've kept that tank, it's on the wall of my garage, but I had it done in blue and silver, which is a 1978 Triumph Tiger color. It weighs about 30 pound less than, a, than it did as standard, or about 40 pound less than a rear disc braked T140. And they were light bikes to start with. So this is sort of 380 pound ready to roll, which is what, 200 and, sorry, under 200 kilos well under 200 kilos, yeah. One, 180. Cool. Brilliant, thank you very much for that and we'll uh, go and take it for a run. We'll go and take it for a rip in this it's, lovely autumn sunshine. Yeah, it's, it is a bit cold though. <laughs> okay, so this is me, Mike, riding the bike now. And it starts really easy. 
Um, a bit easier than the Norton, you have to jump up and down on the kickstarts for a bit on that bike. Um, doesn't start quite so easily as the Trophy, uh, I think it's because that's much lower compression. But um, so how does it feel sitting on it? Well, it's a really comfortable bike. The clutch works nice and light, the throttle is is good, uh, bars are in a lovely position. Um, the seating position does take a bit of getting used to because as with most bikes of this era um, your feet are up quite high and they're quite far, far forwards so um, it does get a bit of, used, a bit of getting used to but you, you know, after about five, you know, a couple of minutes you feel fine with it and it's also a right hand gear change but this time it's a standard gear pattern as opposed to the norm which is the other way around so in terms of looks wise, look at it, you know, you're sitting on it, you've got that lovely chrome headlight, the twin clocks. Uh, I did have some comments on the trophy video about that having a single clock and people weren't that keen on it, but this is what it looks like with the twin clock, so it probably looks a bit more balanced. I did like the, uh, the trophy with the single clock, um, but what I really like about this bike is the um, export tank on it. When you look down from the top, it's got sort of that lovely thin wasp wasted look to it, uh, very stylish and, and I particularly like the air filters poking out that you, you look down on, great looking thing. Um, how does it compare looks wise to the other Brit bikes? Well the Norton's a sexy looking bike, they always have been, and the Rocket 3 is a magnificent looking thing, but I don't think it quite pips the 68 Bonneville, I think that's the, the bike in terms of best looking of them all because it's just got that Steve McQueen factor hasn't it. Okay so riding, how does it go? Well, have a listen to this, I'll shut up here. I just love the engine notes on it and I love the way it accelerates. Um, it's quite revvy, you get it up to about 4,500 RPM and the engine takes on this uh, snarl to the engine there. It's, it's great and you just want to keep dipping into it. Uh, and it, the engine is, is just lovely on this. Um, it's, it's just good fun because uh, the rest of it handles so well and it brakes so well. Uh, it allows you to really enjoy the engine on it. Um, it's very different to the to the Norton and to the BSA, uh, they're much more suited to uh, A roads. Um, like the Norton's very torquey and you ride it smoothly, and it's quite a slow steering thing. And the um, Rocket 3's got a quite a bit more power, but it's it's a different sort of bike, and the brakes aren't you know as good as they are on this Bonneville on the, on the BSA. In fact, the brakes on this bike are probably the best out of all. The, of all the classics, uh, the Laverda had or has really good brakes, and the Norton brakes are pretty good as well. But this, this just is all round. The bike is a is a confidence inspiring bike. You feel very comfortable on it. Um, it's probably the closest of Dave's classics to, to sort of a modern feeling bike. It's something you just jump on and you know, runs well on, um, around town. It runs well. On the open road, uh, it's not at its best on the motorway, but you know it'll it'll cruise at 70, 75. Um, but would I take one across country? Would I take one to the south of France? I don't think I would. Um, it's not really that sort of bike. Um, I'd probably take the Norton if you know if I could get it to last that long. Uh, <laughs> that would be the sort of bike that you could do, you could do some serious miles on because it's comfortable for it and uh, it's more that sort of bike, the same with the Rocket 3 but um, this one is, as I said, is more suited to the sort of roads that we're on now. Um, what we're thinking of doing is um, probably next year now, because the weather's going to start closing in, um, is get the Rocket 3 and the Norton out and um, three of us take the bikes out and we'll, you know, maybe go away for the weekend and um, try the bikes on in on different roads and in different uh, you know different environments 
Um, so that'd be really good. Be like one of the old classic bike, te- one of the bike tests from uh, Bike Magazine back in the uh, back in the seventies that we used to read when we were young guys. Um, so, which one do I think would be quickest up a up a country lane? Um, I think, without a shadow of a doubt, I think this would be. Uh, depends on who's riding, of course, but um, I think if you put Dave on each of these bikes and sent him up a country lane I think he'd be quickest on the Bonneville not that we condone that sort of behaviour, not that we would do it but I'm just uh, saying if we were to so as you can see I really enjoy riding this bike Um, it's just so practical, it's a practical classic bike Um, and I think that's down to the modifications that Dave's done on it uh, I'm not saying every bonnet will be like that but he's got this really sorted and we're going to do a in the workshop on this over winter uh, just go through the mods that he's done on it um, to make it as it is now so if Dave was in the position where he had to give a bike away to you know one of his very good friends then um, uh, I think the bike that I would choose would be uh, this one. Though he has got some very tasty bikes, the Laverda one is uh, <laughs> cool as well. But I think as a practical all-round bike, this this is just wonderful. The only experience is the ownership experience is just wonderful on this thing. So, um, yeah, that we've been riding in. Uh, the borders, so between Wales and Shropshire, we're a place called Urbistock, that's a river D to the left. Um, so thank you very much for watching and thank you Dave for letting me have a go on this bike and keep watching guys because we've got plenty more to come. <laughs>